Um, welcome and привет, everyone. My name is Marianne. I work as a forecaster, and uh, the timing of today's weather briefing was kind of perfect. So, congrats on the organizers. They are excellent long-range forecasters. Uh, on the welcoming uh, slide, you can see a photo uh, taken uh, last night uh, by our colleague Kornia Kovalat, and some of you might have known him personally. Um, this picture uh, shows a snow shower just to the north of our big lake, uh, the Balaton. And uh, here uh, you can see the uh, satellite image also. Uh, I'm talking about this uh, tiny shower. Uh, it was associated with a non frontal convergence zone with an upper level short wave trough. But uh, let's move on to the European scale. Uh, most of the continent has some cloudiness with cold cloud tops here in the east part, in the central, uh, except the Iberian Peninsula and the Mediterranean area. On the natural uh, composite, you can also uh, notice the snow-covered mountains in Spain, in Italy, in, the, in France, and so on. And even in our country, has some um, plain areas which have some snow coverage, thanks to the last few days winter weather. And over the Atlantic region, uh, there is some nice cold air mass cumulus cloud patches. The most interesting feature, though, is over the uh, Benelux countries. On this natural composite, the high-level uh, serious clouds may blur the details, so uh, let's zoom uh, in a little bit. On the HRV uh, composite, uh, convection with several embedded uh, thunderstorms are well seen along the cold front, and also strong pressure gradient is present. For the next slide, uh, which is an uh, Hermes composite, um, I would like to um, <clears throat> uh, I would like to ask you where would you uh, put uh, any marks to uh, to mark the uh, position of the jet stream? It's quite an, an easy question, but please put put some marks or lines or yep. Thank you. Everyone is quite active, and uh, the answers are good because this reddish brownish bands here in the western <coughs> areas and in the eastern shows uh, the areas of the jet stream, which can be checked on the ECMWF uh, 250 hectopascal wind speed um, field. And uh, this jet has um, three dis distinct uh, jet streaks one above the Atlantic, one above the Central European region, and one above the Mediterranean. And uh, the next slide, uh, there you can see the catch, sketch of the frontal activity. Basically, two big uh, synaptic scale systems can be easily analyzed. One connected uh, with a huge trough, and the other one uh, a cut of flow is over the Black Sea, uh, affecting Turkey's weather, but more of it later. The pressure tendency fields show the evaluation of these systems. The Western European here, uh, cyclone, fulfills the requirement of the rapid cyclogenesis, as the 24-hour average tendency is over 24 millibars. In the southern here, uh, the southeastern cyclone will also uh, intensify during the next uh, hours. The 850 uh, field uh, exhibits the location of frontal zones and here and there, uh, and the cold, warm air masses. And the coloring can help with this a lot. The upper uh, levels at 500 hectopascal, a deep long wave trough 
uh, in Central Europe is obvious, but you can also notice here a short wave trough at the upstream side of the larger scale trough. Interesting that if you follow the forecast during the week, uh, you could notice some forecast jumpiness as this rapid cyclone was present in some runs, but occasionally just disappeared from the deterministic runs. And, uh, oops, spoiler. So uh, back to this map, uh, an easy after lunch question. Where would you expect severe weather in Europe today? Uh, I know it's far too easy because some of you might have already uh, experienced the severe weather, but please put some marks. Yep. Great answers, thank you, and we can check it uh, on the... Um, Meteor Alarm uh, website today. Uh, we there's a question. I cannot hear a presentation. Can everyone ask? Okay, then I, I continue. So um, uh, this screenshot was taken this morning. Most of the warnings are uh, for wind gusts, as you can see here. And on the next slide, um, you can see the, uh, that the warning type is also supported by the EFI of wind gust indices for today, uh, and not just the deterministic runs, but also the EPS uh, also suggests that uh, extreme uh, weather is uh, expected in the western areas for, for wind gusts. On the next slide, uh, the lab rates are, uh, are quite favorable in the cold air mass, but at the edge of the dry intrusion here over Germany, uh, where we have more instability and moisture, we can expect better environment for convection. And somewhere here where I have the pointer right now, I made a, a model sounding uh, and uh, for this deformationed area where we have low layer shear more than 50 meter per sec and deep layer shear over 30 uh, meter per sec. And even the hodograph has a nice little curvature. So if we would have a bit more cape, even supercells or tornadoes could uh, develop in such an environment. Um, the lower troposphere is quite moist in whole Europe, in the whole continent, uh, but in the southern half and in central, southern parts, uh, finally we have a lower, a drier atmosphere in the lower part, so uh, it uh, meant that in the morning hours at least we could have some sunshine in, in our capital. On the potential temperature field, the shape of the warm conveyor belt is um, here, is a textbook one. And the next one, uh, where uh, you can see the uh, mean omega, uh, shows the areas where we can expect upward motions on the larger scale. Um, for the next slide, I will just uh, briefly show the model forecast for the K index. And uh, you can see that over Turkey, there's the largest values. And uh, on the next slide, uh, I exhibit how well the GI2 index performs for those few pixels uh, where there is no clouds over Turkey here. And for now, Andre will continue with the more interesting parts and deeper studies. Thank you. Oh, it is okay. Okay, just it was problem with one in the microphone. Okay, so hello. I will now continue the presentation. And thanks to Marianne. Uh, so. Uh, 
Uh, on the next, uh, next slide, I would like to show you the outlook uh, for the precipitation. So, uh, uh, I will yes, try to point here. So, you can see here that there here will be precip precipitation, and here, uh, which is uh, related to the cyclogenesis and to the cyclotic processes you could uh, already see. Uh, but there will be also precipitation here in uh, this area, and uh, which is uh, also important that uh, quite a lot of this precipitation will be in snow form. Uh, so also in this in the Alp Alpine region there has already been a lot of snow, so they uh, will get again some portion uh, in the between in the next days. Also as uh, the and this, uh, there will be a colder air outbreak in the Central Europe, so then here over the Mediterranean, there this will again cause some cyclogenesis, and uh, there will be a lot of precipitation uh, here in the, over the Balkan uh, Peninsula, uh, in, then during the weekend, presumably. Uh, now, uh, uh, I would like to go back to this uh, deep cyclone, uh, which was already discussed, and uh, I plan just uh, to have some insight on the processes uh, which led to uh, this cyclogenesis. Uh, so here you can see that uh, the cyclone deepened. Uh, it was the, in the center there was below 980 hectopascal uh, for the mean sea level pressure. And in this armas composite RGB, you can see here well this uh, cold armas here presented with bluish color, uh, where it is uh, usually expected also that uh, in the upper air fields there uh, there is a uh, uh, high potential vorticity. Uh, now these armas composites and these uh, potential uh, vorticity uh, relationships. Uh, many times used uh, because uh, this can explain uh, this uh, rapid cyclogenesis and the conditions for this process because it is uh, expected that uh, if you can see uh, the potential vorticity field and its anomalies somehow, uh, so we can see also the conditions for baroclinic instability. And this is supposed to be as the most important uh, 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 process uh, for rapid deepening of the cyclone. Uh, now here we can look at the uh, field of the potential vorticity or PV at 300 hectopascals uh, from the ECMWF model forecast. Uh, now just uh, intro uh, introducing uh, this PV, maybe not everybody uh, is familiar with this term, so uh, uh, high values of potential vorticity are usually uh, found in the stratosphere, where the, the static stability of the air is high, and uh, these areas are usually uh, confined to high latitudes, so uh, the Ar Arctic uh, air masses, for instance. Uh, but if you have uh, some uh, upper air wave, then as the wave is deepening, uh, then this air with uh, high PV at the upper levels can go uh, down toward south. Sometimes it is even cut off, so you can see also uh, here uh, uh, high PV area even over, over, over the northern part of Africa. Now, this we can usually call, call the, uh, as a PV anomaly if you, if you had, have such a shape or at least a wavy shape of PV. Uh, now to see how, the, how it uh, looks in the vertical, I created a, a vertical cross section. You can see here, marked with this uh, red arrow. Now it's like this. And so this is a cross section uh, which, uh, which, which is going uh, through uh, this our rapidly developing cyclone, which uh, center is somewhere here, here halfway on the cross section. Now, uh, this PV anomaly, then you can see here that the very cold air is flowing uh, towards south. So there you can see that also these uh, high values of PV are, are 
going lower. So uh, this 1.5 or 2.0 potential vorticity unit is considered many times as uh, some boundary between the troposphere and, and between the uh, stratospheric air, which is very stable and also quite dry. Uh, and here in this part, you can see that here the warm air is going toward the north. So now here you have a so-called folding of the tropopause, so where, uh, where the PV here uh, uh, steeply increases as you are going from one region to another. Uh, in this forward flank, flank of this uh, PV anomaly, you could, usually you can see that there are quite steep uh, also these lines, which are the potential temperature lines. This means that if the air is uh, flowing relatively toward this anomaly, so it must, uh, must rise, must rise uh, upward. So here we should expect uh, some somewhere upward motions, but upward motions are also in this part here. So this is the, in fact, this is the warm, warm front part of, of the system, frontal system, and this is, this is the cold front part of the system. Uh, you can see that there is also some uh, higher PV in this area at low levels, but uh, these are many times uh, these many times come from non-adiabatic processes, like from precipitation and uh, latent heat release, or or this is also due to turbulence uh, and turbulent transport. Uh, so when you once you have here strong ascending motion, so so these are then uh, causing that uh, that uh, then here the cyclone starts to rotate uh, faster and uh, the pressure is uh, decreasing in this region. So this is, this is roughly the concept, usual concept of, of uh, rapidly deepening uh, cyclones. And now uh, there is a question that, okay, we see, can see this uh, process already over the Northern Sea, but uh, uh, where, in fact, it has begun, because uh, this uh, process is about, uh, tells us only about the intensifying of the, uh, of the vorticity at the surface and uh, of, of the deepening of the cyclone. But uh, where uh, did uh, the cyclone come from? Uh, where, where was the place of its birth? And I would like to ask you now that uh, what do you guess that uh, where this cyclone started actually to develop if you can put some mark on this map okay so we have already first guess so you can see that the area is quite large Okay, thank you. I, I think, uh, yes, thanks. I, I think this is enough. So, uh, so then I will show you with the marker. Okay. So now, yes, this, this, is, this is correct. So in fact, so in fact the here you can see a trough here. So we're just uh, north of the Caribbean, and this is in fact the first signal that uh, there uh, cyclones starts to develop. And uh, when we go to the next slide, okay. So so here you can see this area in this water vapor imagery from Goes. So there you can see these long, long, and nice, nicely. Uh, as you can see, this uh, frontal system, and there is already some, uh, some, uh, there are already some deep outs developing. And in in the next day, you can already see that uh, the cyclone has deepened here, as it approaches this area where you can see large temperature gradients here, because there, there is a very cold air over Canada and uh, part of United States. And uh, usually this place is very favorable for uh, developing uh, cyclones because uh, there is also a lot of latent heat release or sensible heat release 
and uh, and so on. Uh, but uh, then, in the next days later, as uh, as the cyclone moved further, so it starts uh, to weaken. Uh, so the pressure was rising in the center, but uh, as we are looking to some uh, uh, some parameters. Uh, when, uh, parameters used in dynamic metrology, for instance, the Q vector and the Q vector uh, divergence. So we see here the idea of convergence, which is usually usually related to uh, ascending motion. Uh, so uh, this cyclone was still still active, and now you see that it, in fact, is becomes a part of a bigger cyclonic system here. So it's, it is on the flank of an older cyclone which center you can see here. And because here we have also a very, very strong jet, so then the cyclone also moves further. Now, uh, now I would uh, like to uh, say some words about the structure of the, the cyclone. So here you can see the temperature field in uh, 925 hectopascal with these lines. And uh, you can see here that uh, the cyclone already has uh, a nice cloud band, which is called head of the cyclone here. And you can see also here a uh, uh, cloud band, which is uh, just in front of the cold, uh, cold front of the cyclone. And uh, okay. so this color. So usually it is expected that there are some also some uh, conveyor belts in the cyclone. So just to show you the structure, no, it's this. So the cold conveyor belts should be somewhere here at low levels, and uh, just uh, just ahead of the wall front of this frontal uh, frontal system. Now as we go to the uh, Next image, uh, then we can see here the equivalent potential temperature field. And now I would like to ask you to show that how the uh, warm conveyor belt should uh, look like. So this is extending from the low level, then, then ending somewhere in the upper levels in front of the warm front somewhere. Yes, so one. Yes. Yes, it's quite good. Okay. Some other guess. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I will change the color. You don't mind? Yes, yes, this, this is very, I think, a very good answer. So, so it's usually really expected that the warm conveyor belt is somewhere like here. So it starts to be in front of the cold front, and then it moves somewhere like here. It is one branch of it. So the, then extends somewhere as as the, you can see. Also, there is a strong upright wind. But it can have also another branch which is going in this direction, or at least in some conceptual models. So, so this is a, a, at least the theory how it uh, should look like. Now we can go further. So uh, uh, this was yesterday in the afternoon hours. So we can see that this cloud band uh, moved uh, uh, further to the east, and now here, so, so this field is the field of divergence at high level, at 300 hectopascal. So here you can see that uh, uh, there is uh, there is uh, some area of divergence because uh, the cyclone is now already in the exit of the jet or close to the exit of the jet uh, region, and uh, in such moments uh, this uh, starts to be interesting from the point of view of rapid cyclogenesis. Also, uh, one could see that here the uh, temperature of this cloud, so the cloud top temperature was falling down in this area. Uh, so uh, 
this uh, was already some first sign uh, that uh, the cyclone starts to deepen again. And here you can see also uh, the vertical motions. So usually uh, these highest vertical motions are somewhere close to the occlusion point. And uh, so this is already uh, some zoom to the area of the cyclone and of its head. So in this stage, you can see that the structure of this, of this head is rather complicated. Uh, so so uh, there you can see that uh, it is not a compact structure, but you can uh, find here some uh, deep clouds and several deep convective clouds, which are deepening. You can see also that some part of this head actually, so these are only high level clouds, and one can see also the cellular convection, which is below. Uh, below. But uh, this uh, should, in some situation, this should not mislead you because uh, this icon is uh, still only force forming, or better to say, reinforcing. And uh, you can see also that how it approaches uh, this uh, entrance of, of the jets uh, at high levels. Now, Marian already told that uh, the forecast of uh, such a psychogenesis uh, is not easy. This, uh, this can be sometimes uh, very difficult uh, because uh, uh, the forecast uh, can uh, vary from one day to, the, to another. So uh, here you can see actually a, a fairly good forecast, uh, uh, which uh, was one week before. So it was the last uh, week Thursday. But in the next days, uh, then the deterministic forecast uh, changed uh, several times. So there were also rounds where you can use C only here on the draft. Uh, it is very important to know uh, that uh, if you have such a situation that you have some uh, small draft here at the flank of a, a big uh, cyclonic area, so uh, such uh, situations are many times likely uh, to, to transit to uh, rapid cyclogenesis. And uh, the models are usually very sensitive in such situations, it depends on the quality of the input data, uh, but also on the setup of the physical parameterization. So uh, that's why is uh, uh, that's why it is good to look on only not only to the deterministic runs, but also, for instance, to the ensemble uh, forecast of such event. And if possible, you uh, can already follow the situation also with uh, satellite imagery that uh, how, how it evolves over the ocean. Now, I would also like to show another situation. This was uh, in the beginning of Janu January this year, and it is just uh, to, uh, to illustrate that uh, rapidly deepening cyclone does not uh, cause only a strong wind and uh, wind storm and related damages but it is important also from the precipitation point of view. Uh, so here you can see, uh, again, uh, a trough here over the Caribbean or north of the Caribbean, and you can see also this uh, very cold air which was present of the United States. You probably heard about it also in the news, that there were several problems because of unusually cold weather. Now, usually with this cold weather, in the upper airs, uh, you can also see that there are some uh, some upper air PV anomalies. Uh, this this one here, the higher PV, it came somewhere here from the northwest, and it approached this low pressure region here, uh, east of the Florida Peninsula. Uh, you can expect already after what I showed before that uh, it is likely that here the psychogenetic process uh, will start. And really, yes, you can see that, uh, that how deep cyclone was developing in the next day. So uh, the, there was a very rapid drop of the pressure. And uh, here you can see also that uh, this uh, cyclone, besides wind, caused also a lot of precipitation just covering this region here is somewhere in New York, so, so this eastern coast of the United States. Uh, 
so uh, uh, this is uh, typically one typical situation which can uh, uh, which can produce snowstorms here in, in this region uh, of the eastern part of the United States. And a similar situation was uh, two years before, with, uh, uh, there was also such rapid cyclogenesis in, I think it was end of January, January or, or 2016 or so. Uh, here you can see a view of the cyclone from the uh, Goyas imagery. And uh, just this is the last slide. This is showing here that uh, how uh, big specific humidity, the high high specific humidity, you can see, you can uh, is present at low levels in in this region, which originates somewhere here in the tropics. So uh, like this, uh, the the cyclone is connected with the tropical region, and uh, my colleagues. Uh, uh, Akos Horat and Attila Nagy, uh, they were studying uh, cases of rapidly deepening cyclones uh, with use of numerical models, and uh, they showed that uh, without this tropical source and, and this bridge connecting the cyclone with this tropical region, uh, that many deep cyclones uh, would not come to existence. So uh, somehow this is important, this is somehow like, uh, like they are connected also with the weather in the tropical region. And I think that uh, this would be, uh, this would be uh, already the end of the presentation. And uh, we would like, together with Marianne, thank you for your attention.